Aloha. Aloha mai a katoa Pauloa. Mai kumakupuni o ke awe a hiki loi ki o nenani o ni i hau a ka helele ni aloha. Te aloha nui noi a katoa Pauloa. E to hoa i pai aina, mau kanaka o iwi, ka ma aina a malihini ketahi. O au no o kumuhina lei moana a to ule o mahalo me to ule ho kipa no teia o toa Pauloa kipa mai la ona mai ho o nenea mai no teia Kala mua, o ia palo kalamu, o ia hoi o leo tutala o Hawaii. Mahalo anui, friends and family, for joining us today. I am here on this very first uh, episode of Leo Tutala o Hawaii with none other than Kumu i Maikalani Winchester, and he is one of our community leaders. He alaka i no oia. He kia i oia, he kumu no oia, he hoa, pili he hoa mai kai. And I'm really fortunate that you're here today. Mahalo anui ya oe e i mai kalani. Ai, mahalo na kikoma mai. Ai, mahalo, mahalo. Ah, no leila. E olu olu. The reason why I was so excited to ask you to join us is that we have a message for those of us who have given our time. We have dedicated our days, our nights, our weeks. And how many years has it been now? Um, in looking at the journey that we travel with our Lahui, side by side with many others in the community, we're coming up on January 17th. It's just upon us. And as we look out there to our people, mm -hmm. I really wanted to ask you, what would you say to our people? Pea koma na o e piliana no ia la nui, ia la koi koi he la ke ia e ho o mana o ana i na mea pili no i komo i wahine o lili o kalani, pili no i ko o kahuli hia o ke au puni. January 17th invokes many memories for our people. Mm. Um, but please, if you would, share with us. Um, o ka mua, mahalo pia, uh, no ke ia kona ana mai iau, ma ke ia polo kona o mai ka ilo. Um, e vehe vehe, e olelo aku ai, pili ana ke ia lako i ko i no. Uh, o vau o i mai, kalani, um, no wai pi o mai vau. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today um, to talk about a very important day, um, to talk about <coughs> who we are, who we have been, and who we can be. The overthrow of our government in 1893, January 17th, is an incredibly important time for us to remember as a people um, because it speaks towards our unity it speaks towards our intelligence. It speaks towards our modern nation that we built, that our ancestors built, that our chiefs built in order to protect and to preserve Hawaiian rights, Hawaiian customs and traditions through law. And this is why Kaui Keoli in 1840 drafted the very first constitution of our monarchy. And since that time up into Lili Uo Kalani Hawaii exercised sovereignty, uh, we exercise international trade, uh, trade and treaties. Uh, with many countries all over the world, we established delegations around the globe. We recognize other nations' independence. Uh, and we were a fully functioning and active member of the world. Uh, however, as many of us know the history, and for some of us who don't, during this process, there were competing interests in the kingdom. Specifically, Haole foreign, uh, Haole sugar planters, who were the descendants of the first American missionaries, um, who were educated also in America, not in Hawaii. They, during this time, seized the opportunity to take advantage of the Hawaiian kingdom and impose upon David Kalakaua in 1887 the notorious Bayonet Constitution, which effectively stripped all Hawaiians of their rights. Now, this is very important for us to understand that Hawaiians were disenfranchised not by their own chiefs, but by the greed and interest of corporations in Hawaii. Anybody heard of that story before? Anyway, as we move on, 
when Kalakaua dies mysteriously in San Francisco, uh, in 1891, Lili Uokalani ascends to the throne, as we all know, and she takes the name Lili Uokalani, the queen. And her first duty, which is very important for us as Kanaka to remember today, was her kuleana was clear to her. She understood that she needed to listen to the voice of God. And the voice of God, as she defined it then, was the voice of her people. And so she toured the islands, like many of us know, and thousands and thousands of people met with the queen and they implored her, please give us a new constitution, the constitution that will allow us to vote and be active members once again in the nation that we built. And so as the chiefess of great mana, of great intelligence, having celebrated Kala Ho'i Ho'i Ea for 50 years, she was there as a young girl, was it 50 years, but she was there. She understood that yielding her authority temporarily could potentially once again have the same effect <coughs> as what happened in 1843 when Hawaii's independence was returned. That's where we get the phrase, Ua mau ke'e o ka'aina i kapono comes from. The sovereignty of the Hawaiian kingdom is perpetuated in just action. And so the, the story of Hawaiian independence is a story about Hawaiian justice. The story about Hawaiian independence is a story about um, Hawaiian kuleana that our chiefs solidified in a modern Hawaiian nation to protect the Hawaiian <coughs> people from foreign invasion, from foreign imperialism, and from countries like the United States of America exercising uh, military occupation over our kingdom, which is what today, my Hawaiian people, we are in right now. We are in a U.S. occupation. And so today, when we come back to remember January 17th, 1893, we also remember the illegal actions that were done against our queen and continue to f disenfranchise and fragment our people today. <coughs> and so on January 17th, we remember a very important message, the final kawoha of Lili Wokalani, the queen, which was to Onipa'a. Onipa'a, for many of us, is a very important and powerful word. Onipa'a means to stand firm, to be steadfast, to be strong, <coughs> to be knowledgeable of who we are. And it's difficult for us as Hawaiians today to acknowledge who we are, to self-identify, because the system for the last century was designed to erase who we are, to eliminate our consciousness, our culture, our language, our history, our nationality. And for 100 years, this occupation has disenfranchised Hawaiians, not just by land, not just by water, but with our consciousness as well too. And so we're here today to reclaim our consciousness. We're here to reclaim our identity as Hawaiians. We're here to remember, like Lili Lili Wokalani told us, my poena, don't forget, we're here to remember our struggle, our kuleana, and why we continue to pursue justice for Hawaii, why we continue to kulea and to strive for the independence that continues to belong to our people. So January 17th, 2023 is a very important day because it marks the 130th year since the overthrow of our kingdom. And as maybe some of us remember in maybe college days, high school days in 1993, there was a big famous march that happened where thousands and thousands of Hawaii, Hawaiians and their supporters, because once again, the Hawaiian kingdom wasn't strictly ethnically Kanaka. <clears throat> we were diverse. Um, Japanese, when they moved to Hawaii, they didn't speak English, they spoke Japanese and Hawaiian. Chinese migrants, when they came here, they spoke Hawaiian. Irish. When they came here, they learned Hawaiian because we were a Hawaiian kingdom exercising our Hawaiian culture, our Hawaiian traditions. And that's what the kingdom was built to secure. When we were overthrown in 1893, our reality changed. Education specifically was used to denationalize Hawaiians, that is, to remove any content that reminds us of our true place in Hawaii. Many people call it colonization, other people call it indoctrination. 
Nevertheless, we were brainwashed. We were meant to believe that we are something that we are not. And so, only pa'a is important because we must remember who we are and be firm in who we are. And once you can reclaim that consciousness, now we know the importance of resistance. <clears throat> now we know that in our story, that Lili Uokalani did not lay down, that the Hawaiian people did not just give up and acquiesce to the might of the United States of America. In fact, there is clear evidence of thousands and thousands of Hawaiians who signed the Ku'e petitions, which is here on my shirt, um, who protested vehemently the annexation and the overthrow of our kingdom. The United States Congress for five years argued and debated over and over again the legality of being able to annex the Hawaiian kingdom, for which they ultimately found they did not have the power to do so. You cannot apparently <clears throat> annex a kingdom without their consent through a treaty. And this treaty doesn't exist. Therefore, consent was never given. And it must be understood by all people, Kanaka and non-Kanaka, that Hawaiians have not forgotten. That the Hawaiian kingdom continues to live through our actions, through our leo, that the Hawaiian kingdom lives through our children. And so we are taking our students, we are taking schools, thousands of children have signed up um, to march once again at Onipa'a uh, to show to Ho'ike, to the world, that we have not forgotten, that we have not surrendered, and that we continue to fight for our kingdom, we continue to fight for our independence and our ea, with the very last aloha aina to come. And so, I appreciate the opportunity to come onto your show and to spend your first program uh, talking about a very important day uh, that I'm obviously uh, passionate about as a Hawaiian teacher, um, as a PhD student as well. Um, and ultimately, through conscientization of our people, through the uh, raising the level of resistance, ultimately we're all working towards the same thing, and that is transformation, that's liberation. Um, so the Hawaiian liberation movement is not just about political freedom. It is about cultural freedom. It's about spiritual freedom. It's about intellectual freedom that was taken away from us and occupied just like our lands were occupied by the United States of America. So it is important, it is imperative that we as a people continue to rise to the occasion, to lift and to cultivate the sense of oya i'o, the sense of truth about our nation, our people, our history, so that from this point, we can see into the horizon and we can see beyond, we can see the island before we even leave the bay. And this is sort of the confluence of our cultural intellectualism as well as our political um, aspirations for the future. And all of these things from Red Hill to Kaho'olawe to whatever issue you name, they're all tied into the same thing. There is no difference. From incarceration of Kanaka, from half of our people um, having to leave Hawaii because it's too expensive. All of these things, they're connected. And so it's important that Hawaii and Hawaiians and our supporters and the people who believe in truth and justice, only pa'a, that is to stand for what is right. Despite what popular narratives about what Hawaiians did, what Hawaiians didn't do at this time, we must be firm in our truth. We must be firm in our identity and we must reclaim it, draw strength from it, and transform our reality as a people. And so Onipa'a is a very important event, um, an important period for us to think very carefully about. But without action, theory disappears into space. And so I encourage you all to take action wherever you may be, uh, wherever you may be, whether you're in Honolulu, whether you're in Las Vegas, whether you're in Japan, throw up your Hawaiian flags and go take that walk and tell people that Hawaiian kingdom lives and that we have not forgotten and we will never give up our fight. Eo. Eo. Polole ilo no oe e kumu imai kalani. As I reflect on these many years of advocacy and, and standing up, raising my voice, joining other voices, um, 
every march, every protest, every rally, every gathering, you name it. There have been so many times where I have been criticized by both family and friend. Why are you Hawaiians going to do this? How come you Hawaiians don't just accept it and get over that history? And I think you touched upon it in what you just said. And I'd like to toss to you the, the opportunity to speak to this. And, and this is something that you and I know. Um, it is something that others in our community know. But maybe if we call a spade a spade, you and I and, and many others of us who took on this mantle of uplifting our people. We went and we did exactly what our parents and our grandparents wanted us to do. They told us to go to school. They told us to get an education. They told us to be better. They told us to make something of ourselves. And I'd like to ask you to engage us for a moment on deconstructing and reimagining, re-envisioning exactly what is that better than, what is that greater than. Because to me, that process of colonization, that process of indoctrination into the mindset and the ways of foreigners, mm. the more American we have become, the more we have acquiesced the more we have given in and allowed ourselves, we ourselves, even our own, our own people, and of course, through no fault of our parents and grandparents' gen uh, generation, that is part and parcel of what was intended. You mentioned it, the erasure of our mm -hmm. identity. So what do we say to our people and and how do we encourage them in the face of opposition, in the face of the kinds of prejudices and discrimination against Hawaiians, against our kanaka? Because we just can't accept the realities of today and we just got to get over it. Mm. Um, those are very important questions. <clears throat> and, and ultimately, the way that we can address the condition of the Hawaiian people. Again, we have been programmed to believe a certain way, including our parents' generation, who are ultimately the first generation to be impacted by the loss of language. And with loss of language, you also understand comes loss of cultural understanding, loss of cultural history, loss of all of these things that we now don't have access to. And so, like many people who have faced uh, imperialism, colonial, colonialism, we've had to sort of pick and choose from the pieces around us to help to define who we are. Um, we are very fortunate because so much of our history was written down. Because our people were such a literate nation, millions of pages are available for us to read, for us to theorize about. And in this writing, you have not just culture, but you have principles, not just principles, but you have theory. You have praxis. You have all of these things that fundamentally make us human beings. And part of our education was that Hawaiians were savages. We're not human. And in order to become human, we needed to satisfy this model that was imposed upon us. Colonization looks a lot like assimilation, looks a lot like integration. And so I'm not about integration. Integration into the major body. And if you follow the Black Power movement, they weren't about integration as well too. They're about self-determination, self-identity, self-reliance, self-transformation. And I believe likewise that our parents felt something was wrong. Just like many of you maybe feel something is wrong, but maybe you cannot articulate it just yet. And our parents saw us like we see our children and we want better for them. We want them to, to not have to struggle or feel the same sort of self-doubt that we grew up, that we still fight through today. I'm a grown man, but I still fight through those things that I developed as a child. <clears throat> and in the interest of trying to lift us off the ground, which our parents and their generation saw was happening to our people, they saw that education was an important route for us to take. Now, I'll say this, that our kingdom also saw education and literacy as an important route to preserve and empower 
Hawaiians. And so I agree that education, that leads to conscientization. But what is education? Who is educating? What is the goal of this education? And for much of us who understand um, the political uh, landscape, we understand that education is control. Education is pacification. But for others like yourself and myself who entered uh, the charter school movement many, many years ago, also understand that education is liberation. Education is transformation. Education is empowerment. And so many kumu out there throughout all of the, the islands and all the different schools also feel like us as well. And they are using their position to elevate, to uplift um, the next generation without those same traumas. And we are going through that process as well too. And it's important for us to talk about as teachers the process of our praxis. What does Hawaiian pedagogy look like? And these are things that can only be defined by Hawaiians, can only be defined by, by us as a people. It cannot be defined by somebody else, their vision, their aspirations, and it must be centered on what we believe as a people, collectively. And so part of the movement to get us educated, and we did it, we got the degrees, we got the things, we jumped through all those hoops, um, and here we are. Maybe, speaking for myself, not satisfied with the, the change or the reality that continue to exist for our people today. And so many of us have committed, not just in the schools, but also in the streets, also in the communities, also in the churches, also in wherever Hawaiians exist, even in jail systems. That we need to recommit to self-identity. We need to recommit to who we are as a people because having a firm pico, a firm foundation, um, is so important uh, uh, to a people who have been separated who have been uh, cut off um, and divided from that very important connection of who we are. So we continue to search and strive for who we are as a people. And it's not just by thought, it's by action. Who you are is what you do. That's your character. And so the challenge to us as people is not just to know a bunch of stuff. You know, knowing means nothing unless you're going to do something about it. And if you're not going to do something about it, then teach somebody else so they'll do something about it. And through the collective action, the collective accountability. And that's what I learned from Uncle Kikuni Blaisdell, you know, um, at Thomas Square, Kala Ho'i Ho'i is We all need to be accountable. We all need to make a commitment, big or small. And our commitment has grown over the years, I believe. But big or small, you must take the first step. The journey begins with the first step. Wherever you may be, even if this, watching this program right now is your first step, watch it with your kids. Show your parents. Show your grandparents. Um, Without the dialogue of us Aye. together and understanding Aye. who we are together, Aye. we are in danger. We are susceptible to outside definition. And for me, kuokoa, independence, is about self-definition, Hawaiian definition. Um, and that's important that as we grow, as we develop these Western skills and stuff like that, we also understand the value and we recenter once again our own pedagogies, our own theories. And we need to understand Aye. that we have them. I, that we do have them. Pololei no kumu. I listen to you. I um, I have a thought that keeps recurring in my head, and it's been a part of what on you know in, in my work in the community with our charter schools. Mm -hmm. That's how I came up with this thought, and I want to know what your um, what your take on this is when you hear the words Hawaii is my mainland. Mm -hmm. Hawaii is our mainland, mm -hmm. and it's imperative that our people understand what this means. Mm. Hawaii is our pico. Hawaii is our mother. Hawaii is the place where we owe our allegiance, mm. and we pay homage mm. to our homeland, our motherland. Our Ainaha now, um, I believe that the shift that you are speaking about, the changes and, and the direction that are found in the words that you have shared with our people today, 
I believe that one of the ways we can encourage our people to start to think about how they see themselves, how we as a people see ourselves, we cannot embrace the changes that you speak of unless our people shift the identity and not call the continental U.S. the mainland. Mm. That is not our land. Mm. Mokuhonu or Great Turtle Island, mm. as our brothers and sisters, Study the natives, <laughs> that's, well, you know, imagine. Well, the colonizers. I should say, yeah, sorry. the colonizers, not, not the colonizers land. It belongs to our native brothers and sisters. Mm. But our l continued looking towards America, mm. that kind of approach, that mindset, that space in the heart and in spirit has got to be challenged. Yeah. So I say again, Hawaii is our mainland. What can you say to our people about this? Once again, conscientization leads to resistance. And once we understand and we know who we are and we're firm in our identity, we also know who we are not. Ew. Right? Important, just as important as knowing who we are is knowing who we're not. All right. And so we need to unlearn a lot of things that have been put upon us, that have been constructed in this world that we call reality. Because we understand that in the dialectic, in Hawaiian we call them dualism, right? In the dialectic of power, there's those up top and obviously if somebody's on top, somebody's got to be on the bottom. And so the dialectic of power really needs to be shifted. And when you speak about, you know, uh, when people say mainland rich Hawaiians, stop saying that. Listen to me. Stop saying that. When we say mainland, we give authority, we give power, we give recognition, we give mana. We yield. We yield. We surrender. We seed. We surrender. Absolutely not, Aole Loa. And Onipa'a is why you should never say that again. You know where is our mainland? Is the Pocky Pico. We in it right now. Aye, Polole, Oya no. We in it right now. Kamoana Nui. As a state of mind, Aye. as a state of consciousness, and a state of being, this is our mainland. And we have been taught by the people who have flooded Hawaii who refer to it as a mainland. And we've picked it up as sort of like, ah, it's just something to say. But we must also be clear whose power that reinforces. Aye. Aye. What injustice Aye. that continues to perpetuate. Which is why for us, we must challenge, we must resist, we must oppose even the smallest attempts to degrade the mana and the power and the, the air of who we are as a people and a nation. And that's what we kind of forget, people. We are Hawaiian, we, we are a, a culturally rich people, but part of our identity is a national identity. We added that, just like we continue to add on today. And so it's important that we resist and we push back in every, in, in every way that we can, including the things that we say, including the things that we don't say. Well, Kumo, this, I recall um, writing a piece during my time at Kahoivai. And it became the piece known as a movement of insistence. Mm. And moving away from the resistance and moving towards insistence where we insist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We insist that being Kanaka is first and foremost mm. in the mind, the heart, the spirit. That Kanaka ways in our homeland, that our language and our culture and our history be reinstated to its rightful place. Okay. And part of that is exactly what your words have said. Uh, with that said, though, it's important for everyone listening to challenge yourself and ask yourself, how can we be consistent? How can all of our friends and family that might be watching, what do we need to do to be congruent to have this consistency with going out and honoring January 17th, marching with Onipa, flying the Hawaiian flags, flying them from the back of our trucks and our cars, and saying, I'm proud to be Hawaiian. 
yet we still address the continental mm. U.S. as the mainland. Mm. There is an incongruence that is so subliminally pervasive that it's scary and it's dangerous because mm. it really reflects a, a, a extremely convoluted and compromised understanding of who we are. Right. What would you say to help our people get over that hump and really push themselves? Uh, famous South African leader Stephen Biko said something very powerful. He said that the most powerful weapon in the hands of the oppressor are the minds of the oppressed. Hey, yo. The most powerful weapon in the hands of the oppressor are the minds of the oppressed. I'll throw another one at you. This famous guy, Kili Ioane, Uncle Skippy. He used to also say that if you can hem all the chains from your brains, your LM will follow. Well, he used another no. word, but I'll say LM. <laughs> Bela no, eh? Right? If you hem all the chains from your brains, your LM will follow. Aye. <laughs> and so, to me, it's not one thing that can be done. It's many things that got to be done. Like a lo'i is a system, so is our consciousness. It's a system that needs to be fed, needs to be cultivated. Then you got to pull some weeds to make it flow. And so if we can exercise our kanaka consciousness, you know, our kanaka uh, epistemology, the way that we learn and things like that, and, and, and really center that to who we are, we begin to see ourselves and act as kanaka. Lili, uh, uh, Harani K. Tras said it. In order to uh, act like Hawaiians, we need to think like Hawaiians. And it's very powerful. In order to act like Hawaiians, we need to think like Hawaiians. And those two, they exist together, like Kane and Kanalo. You cannot have one without the other. It's like Kane and Wahine. And it doesn't necessarily, it's not linear. Action can happen, and then conscientization can follow. It doesn't have to be, you know first, and then you're going to do it. You can do something, like show up at Onipa on January 17th. Aye. And feel this swell of emotion. Aye. This swell of frustration, this Aye. swell of joy, this Aye. swell of uh, hope Aye. that no book, no video, no lecture Aye. will ever be able to offer you. Follow the ino. And through that action, you get conscientization. Ayo. You begin to ask the questions. You begin to associate with certain people. Things start Aye. to make sense. You begin to learn the language. Oh, yeah, no. And, 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 and it takes, to answer your question, it takes many things. Yes. But... One thing that I learned, which is very important, that kind of drives who I am as a person in the community, is what Uncle um, Polikapu Deadman said, Uncle Olave, when he said, activate your activism. And to me, that's important to activate your activism. Now that you know, what are you going to do? Aye. Aye. If you're not going to do anything, what good are you? Aye. Um, what purpose do you have? And we all have a purpose, just like all the rocks inside the, the big pot of the, the cool pot. Um, every single rock, big and small, has a purpose. Aye. Everyone interlocks with one another. Aye. Some are bigger stones, some are smaller stones, some flat, some ugly, some like whatever, you know. But every stone is important. Aye. Every step is important. Every avena is important. Aye. Every discussion is important towards rebuilding our wall. And it's only been broken for like, like this is our history, right? And this is... 100 years in our history, which represents the overthrow. Aye. And so, if we can see our, our history and our future as one massive continuum, like a kua pa, then all we got to do is pani kapuka. We don't see it as something impossible. Like, we got to rebuild the whole wall. No, no, the wall's still there. The constitution, legislation, uh, that's why in kingdom stuff. Like, all, all of this um, deal, deal we, well, that, that's us too. You know, mm. we already built it. This is just all the California grass we got to knock down. Aye. This is all the albizas that we got to cut down. <laughs> And put it to work. We're going to make one va'a and let's go sailing. We'll grab some, some aye, opelu. Aye. And we'll go restock this fish pond of ours. <clears throat> and so for us as Kanaka, we, 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 we need to really exercise the idea of adapt and adjust. You know? We need to be ever willing to adapt um, and to learn. And just like uh, Malcolm X said, by any means necessary. By every means necessary. If we all do it, if we all can lift put our hand on top of that vow, who that thing floats right up into the sky, right? Aye. And so that's, that's what we need is we need collectivity. We need unity. We need a strong consciousness. And do we need it tomorrow? No, but we can start. Aye. And that uh, brings us to perhaps the um, 
the next thought, and that is shifting the consciousness also requires us to, at some point, hopefully arrive at that epiphany. Mm. As you said, mm. does it require doing this first or this first? Mm. You don't necessarily have to be here in your understanding wh where is the ideal place to be, but by continued application of oneself to mm -hmm. the momentum and to the effort. And so as we look towards January 17th, mm -hmm. of which uh, this year again is being organized by our friend and other another community leader, Helani Sonora Pale. Mm -hmm. She continues to do efforts on behalf of the the name Kalahui Hawaii, mm -hmm. and she has organized a whole range of speakers this year. Mm -hmm. I believe you are going to be one of them right. who is speaking. Um, I will be joining everybody in the morning at Mauna Ala, and uh, after that, I have some kulena that I need to be taking care of, but on that day, it is a day for our people to reflect. Mm -hmm. It is a day for our people to restore, mm -hmm. reinvigorate, re-envision. It is a day for us to reinstate our rightful place of spirit, heart, mind, and our physical existence. And I would dare say to everyone, for all of those of you Kanako who live, on Mokuhonu, when you live away. I know that this past year we saw residents, we don't know necessarily the breakdown of ethnicity, mm -hmm. but our island people residents. Any of you Kanaka who moved away, I hope one day that you'll be able to come home and enjoy and appreciate being here and that as we lead our next generations, and as our next generations hopefully ascend mm. into whatever political system mm. that may be operating. Of course, I'm sure you and I have our opinions of what kind of political system we would like. We get to choose that, though. We get to choose that. Um, you know, I'll always have my um, my heart set on Hawaii Ku Oko'a. Mm. I will never, ever lose the vision that Hawaii could one day regain political independence. Mm -hmm. It would not necessarily be the end all to our social issues, mm -hmm. our political and economic issues, but it would certainly create a different kind of opportunity. And I believe that it's the kind of shift that our people can work towards. Mm -hmm. Your words today have truly inspired us. Our, your words have uplifted us. And Several moments here in sitting with you have made me want to do an ugly cry on on top of this first show, but I'm doing my best not to do that. Um, in closing, Kumu Imai Kalani, do you have any more, uh, any one last thought that you would like to share? And, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to put it out there and use social pressure. If you like what you heard and what you saw today, because I do, and I'm really hoping that Kumu Imai Kalani will grace us with his presence, his knowledge, his intelligence, and just his leadership uh, in speaking to all of you because I've been inspired. What last thought would you share with our people? to lift them up today? Or anything else you want to say? Um, the message that, that I have for our people is that we can and we will. Only pa'akako. Hold your ground. Only pa. Become strong. Build a defense. Not just the defense, but build the offense, build the special teams, whatever it needs, by any means necessary. We all need to own pa'a, and we can, and we will. Many people say that the thought of independence is a, a, a pipe dream. But remember that we were the first non-European 
nation state in all of the world. Understand that we were the most literate countries in all of the nation when we were in control. Understand that the plight of the Hawaiian people began with the loss of political control. So, poverty, homelessness, the diaspora. Half of all the Hawaiians in this world don't live in Hawaii. And I would tie that directly to the events that took place on January 17, 1893. And up until every single day since then. <clears throat> this is not something that happened in the past. This is something that happens every single day. The overthrow hasn't stopped. I Understand that. The overthrow has not stopped. And it will not stop unless and until our people exercise our mana, exercise our authority, exercise our ale. And you know what? We can and we will. That's my message. Mahalo anu ya o e kumu i mai kalani. Mahalo anu ya o e kou mau mana. Ko ho e eu ane ya ka koa pa oloa kalahu i kanaka. Mahalo anu ya o e kou aloha. Mahalo anu i no ke aloha aina. Ke aloha i kalahu i. Mahalo anu ya o e no kou ho o kupa a ana a no kou lilo ana i alaka i. O ko kau alahu i aloha. Mana o lana ke ia. E mai ka ia na no kao hele ana. Mana wahi a paulo ao e hele ai. Mana o lana ke ia. E ko ponu ana no kao mau mea, kao mau hana ao e kuli ai e ho o ko. A o ko wahi leo mahalo anu i ke ia ia oi. E ka mahalo. Oko <laughs> Oye ho i o leo tu tala o Hawaii. A hiti e te papana hau mai, a hiti te polaklamo hau mai. Until next time, a hui hau kako, aloha. Aloha. <laughs>